you yeah. have had a white person infiltrate yet another infiltrate. thing that was meant for black people and you okay. have now in white invited a white person to come in infiltrate you've mm. invited a colonizer into another thing that has now been ruined by wow, another white is that person what they're but saying? In you see that's the thing um i don't remember ever saying this was just for black people or that you no know, white people were allowed i'm sure pretty much every video i've ever done um has always said that Wu Sabat is embracing and is for everyone and um, it's for humanity. So people who still have that mindset, it's really on them um, because you can't talk about love and divine love and then do the opposite. Yeah, so um, I can understand to a certain degree why they feel that way because, as I said when we spoke, that um, some people still have trust issues with colonizers um they feel that if we allow people of other races especially caucasians or europeans into our um our stuff that they may destroy it or destabilize it or you know do what they see history as mm. being you know so i can't understand that but um Wusabat is on a different level, and not just Wusabat, but anyone who is um, developing in terms of their consciousness, like I said, you've got to really transcend people, places and things. Mm. Um, and if you're on that level, then colours um, don't really matter because really you're dealing with, you're dealing with a higher consciousness um, and beings on a higher consciousness don't really get bogged down with the mundane kind of like low vibration things that separate people like colors and I'm better than you and you're better than me that kind of thing so yeah I, I don't know where that that's come how did you feel about reading um, those comments so those ones I didn't mind yeah uh, because I understand all perspectives uh, and I did mention like my background myself being Lithuanian moving to the UK straight mm. into Tottenham you know um, then having to learn English learning it in a way that is perceived as speaking black. Mm. So, you know, throughout my whole life, I've been basically attacked for being too black mm. and then too white. So the, the black people are like, okay, you're, you're, you know, you're stealing the way we speak, you're stealing this and that. And then the white people are like, you're, too, you're, you're basically black. So This is the question know, though. Define being, define white. What well, that's makes the thing. a person so white? Th this is again for somebody now. So my yeah. friend, she's very well spoken. She's mm. Nigerian. People say, oh, you speak like a white girl. She goes, well, you're basically saying I should be speaking black, which is not well spoken. And ah, you're going exactly. to trouble for that. So then, not well no, no. spoken is so, no, black. No, this is, this is what they're yeah. saying. So then she's like, are you now saying I should speak unwell? Because that's what we as black people are. And they're like, oh, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. So mm. what are you saying then? So then people get caught up on their own words. Right. So what is speaking black and what is speaking white? This mm. is the way I speak is a London thing. This is how I learned my English. I mm. didn't know that this is not the right accent for me to learn. And then even then, where would I even go to learn it? And now, mm. if I wanted to unlearn my accent and the way I speak, where would I even start? And what would I pick? Mm. What is the right thing for me to speak or so on and so on? So, yeah, it's quite a... Yeah, like, the reason I asked that question is because who defines who is black and who is white? And the definition that most people would be familiar with is coming from when... Hitler, for example, was trying to create the perfect race, the Aryan race, the blonde hair, blue eyed. And that came about with the saying that if you have one drop of black blood in you, you're no longer white. Mm. So when people like to put labels on people to say you're black, you're white, it's like what, define that because, like I said, you're not white. And I'm not black. Because mm. when we look at this, yeah. this is black and white, as they teach us, right? Mm. So what it is, I think people are, people are looking at people's nature or behaviour and then terming that, or with stereotypes, terming that you're black or you're white. But behaviours are the same in all races. You can have good people in all races, bad people in all races, angry people in all races, happy people in all races. So for those people who are making those comments, I would say, you know, check, check yourself before you wreck yourself. <laughs> I'm really saying check yourself. Like, really think about what you're saying. Like, who gives you the right to be judgmental? Um, you, can, you can judge people based on the character 
or you know how they treat you and how they behave and what they do but you can't really just generalize and mark everyone with the same brush you know so mm. that's what i would say to those people but as long as you're happy and cool in your skin and yeah yeah so looking at me, you it took looking me a at while your to jeans, get here it took me a yeah. while to get comfortable with it but yeah looking at your genes and your genetics any any white person that's got brown hair brown eyes or any form of brown in them are no longer white according to the definition of having one drop of mm. black blood what makes you not not white and then the black thing again we're not black so what is black because when you start to look at the dictionary and going into like law and stuff in terms of what black is defined as it's not a good thing anyway it's a it's not a positive thing you see so people mix up being black as in the energy or the state of blackness meaning that before there was light before anything could be seen it was darkness yeah to color because all colors combined are black so Black people are using the fact of saying they're black in terms of a color, which doesn't make any sense because colors um, are just vibrations or moods and ne most things that are black in the dictionary and in society are negative anyway. So when we say black, we're talking about the state of supreme balance where it's the energy that everything comes from and that's the state everyone is trying to aspire to anyway this is why i'm saying that when you transcend people places and things and you're thinking about everything going back to that all mm. there is no there is no light yeah it's just it's just a it's been hard to put into words that's why we say in our language um, we say pa ut or pa pa ut which means the all expanding because everything is one and expanding as it as it continues to grow. You mm. see, yeah. yeah. So I hope that's helped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it has, and um, I think some of the other stuff as well that was um, surprised people was, yeah. um, especially one of my friends as well. He brought it up. He goes, "Oh, I thought he was anti-white." Mm. Um, so I think there's also a difference in, uh, not necessarily a difference, but there is. Um, a thing where people think that if you are pro-black, you must be anti-white. Mm. So I think a lot of people assume that you was anti-white. Yeah. And to see that you're actually interacting with a white person, mm. not in a hostile manner, was quite surprising for people to see. Again, this is, this is the thing. Like, racism was actually something created to put people, different races against each other. And um, to say you're anti-white, it's like, again, it doesn't make sense. And... Even, I think I showed, um, yeah, the interview I did with another brother called uh, Man Like Nels. Um, I had a No One Wins the Race in Racism t-shirt on. And on our website, that's something that has been there for years. And we say uplifting humanity because there was a, a video of Dr. York, actually, where he was talking about um, white people in one video and... It was then edited in a way to make him seem like to make it seem like he was racist. And the end of the video, he went on to saying, if black people say they were here first and everything comes from black, then where do white people come from? Right? And he went on to talk about black devils because there are, as I said, people in every race that are good or bad. And he was basically explaining that point that when you have organizations or people who teach racism um because i remember like the nation of islam used to say you know the white man's a devil even dr york has said it and many people have said it but you can't just take a sentence out of context and then use that to say someone's racist or anti-white and when when you say the devil you have to break down what that means and this is where the colonization and you know, um, the Europeans or white people going around the world causing a lot of the wars and, the, you know, the, the problems that a lot of people see comes from. But you can't say all white people are, mm. do you know what I mean? Or you can't say all black people are good. So this, yeah. this good and bad thing is, again, is something that it's just about separation and creating um, divisions. And we are about 
uniting. Yeah. That's, yeah, I that's... think uh, with that, I feel like the personal experience that I've had is even obviously myself being a white person, you have the colonizers, yeah. the elite, the oppressors, which isn't necessarily every single white person out there as you know most people would would Term, uh, yeah. uh, make it out to be in the comment section, right? So even myself, every day I am oppressed by the government. Mm. Myself, everybody, we yeah. are oppressed by the government. The, the things that they are doing to the people, um, and even then further away from the government, the way they are, like you said, they're um, controlling us using racism, um, uh, fear, so many fear-mongering, scare-mongering mm -hmm. tactics. Um, and all of these are used against everybody. No matter what colour you are, you will be suffering from all of these things. Mm. And um, obviously within that, when we talk about these, we do say the oppressor, we do say the white man, because mm. I, to be honest, I don't know who's in charge. Obviously they say it's the reptilians. Mm. It's, there's so many different terms for whoever this group is that is in charge, mm. creating all of these. Um, so yeah, when I hear these concepts, I know what they're referring to. They're basically referring to the elite that are creating all of these and it's kind of funneled, funneling down, yeah. being, you know, trickling down the system. Um, but but then, if, you do, if you do do the research and find out who is in control, you're going to find out that it is white families. Yeah. Like the Rothschilds. Yeah. Um, do you know what I mean? There's so many of them that are the people that are the banking, you know, control yeah, all the banking of the system. Ones with the banks. Mm. Even if you go to like court, most of the time you see white judges. Yeah. You look at the police, it's a, most of the time the, the, the higher people are always white. So I can see why people will feel mm. that way. Um, but like you say, these families, the Bilderbergers, the Rothschilds, the, you know, there's so many, I can't remember all their names right now, but they are being controlled or they're in conversations with extraterrestrials like that are running the planet. Mm. So it's not even really them because some of them are related by blood because they have the RH yeah. negative blood types. Anyone with the RH negative blood types has that extraterrestrial blood um, you know, link. Um, but ultimately, they are the ones that are... It's only about five richest families, and then it goes down to like the, the 300 richest people, then mm. the 500 richest people, and then it kind of trickles down to the rest of the world, and they... The ones at the top, they leap. They they want to just they're greedy. They just want to control everything, control everyone's lives. Um, so yeah, those are the people. When you say who are they, but mm. the common person on the street, or whether white or black, they are just as oppressed by those elite as anyone else. Mm. You know. So yeah, I can see. Obviously, there are black people also that have work their way up to be, you know, prominent in society, um, many names, influential people that sell out and become a part of the elite as well, mm. uh, or they're used as, you know, puppets. Um, we've met, we can mention the music industry, the film industry and entertainment industry with many people who are in that position. You know, even people, I mean, uh, you've heard names like Quincy Jones, um, Oprah Winfrey, you can go on and on, even Diddy's been getting a lot of heat lately. Um, there's so many people that are named Jay-Z, that are named as being a part of that elite. Um, they throw up certain symbols and signs that people say, okay, they're part of the Illuminati and so on. So um, it's a mixture. Mm. Um, if you haven't watched the movie End of Days, have you seen that movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger? I think I've, yeah. Yeah, um, that shows you how how the network of the people that are controlling the world goes and it could mm. be anybody and you mentioned it as but when you mentioned about that uh what did you the call agent it? agent smith yeah agent smith mm. yeah so it could be literally anyone um yeah okay um yeah i think that kind of wraps up most of the comments uh, there was a few obviously nice ones in there but mm. yeah that was that's kind of like the general vibe uh, and i feel like yeah you covered it quite nicely um, so yeah, maybe we'll move on to my next question, which kind well, of... Well, just one more question. Yeah, if you yeah, want to add anything else The Wusabat stance is, if you accept the truth, and that's what Wusabat is about, doesn't matter who you are, yeah? However, obviously, in terms of things like prolonging the legacy and the genetics of our race, we would prefer 
um, that people stay within their race in terms of offspring. But if somebody chooses or was like attracted or in love with someone from another race, that's their choice and they have to live with the responsibility and the consequences of whatever that comes with. But ordinarily, we would be like, do you know what I mean? Let's keep our um, genetics pure, like how, you know, the royal family and certain bloodlines, they, they basically mix within themselves and not go To what extent would that. you say? Is that country-wise or just like... So would let's say somebody from, uh, like a white person from one side of Europe mm. to another side or a black person it's all from about the Caribbean, ge- Africa. Yeah, like... it's about the genetics. Okay. That's, that's all it's about. It so doesn't matter you... where you're from. Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah, you said not to, uh, you know, ideally not to intermix too much. So you mean... That's it. I mean, like, I'm not saying we can't stop people from doing it. And there are people who have and they've got children and families and that. And that's, that's down to them. But what I'm saying is, preferably, we would say stick within your, within your race just so that you don't okay. um, kind of weaken your genetics. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to express like whether you meant from each country or whether to carry out a DNA test to see what your, you know, yeah, what that's part of the world you are. Yeah, that's a very interesting one because... How far out you're, how seriously yeah, yeah, you take yeah. that. That's an interesting one because it's, it seems a little bit contradictory because how would you know um, because if you're not judging by just looking at someone because there are some people that can look really light and their genetics or DNA might be actually stronger than someone who looks really dark, even though um, you would think that the stronger the like, that the melanin would mean that the stronger the genes. But in this day and time, because there's so much mixture, you can't really tell. Mm. So I guess it will be down to the individual to decide. Yeah. Oh, and whether they're choosing based on looks or... Um, like you say, really, in our culture, we do that, though. We're meant to take out DNA tests, blood tests, to check out who you're mixing with because mm. you don't know what's in the genes. Yeah, mm. that, that's the way you are supposed to do it. But in this day and time, most people don't, they don't do that. I was going to say, that makes sense because some of the more affluent people that I've met in my life who yeah. are, like, you know, the really top upper classes... That is the lips they go to mm. to generate their children. Yeah. They will find out the person's like uh, medical history. Mm-hmm. They will do all the compatibility tests and they would even pre-plan mm. the, the, the date and the month of when they want to have that mm. child. That's right. Everything is very, very orchestrated. Families as well. Um, you know, but the, the stereotype is, um, you know, arranged marriages is like something that only, you know, South Asian families do. Mm. But actually, a lot of the more wealthy, affluent families do arrange marriages mm. where they'll arrange couples based on yeah, whether it's think their about genes it. or If somebody's got history. like a medical condition, mm. you know, like for example, sickle cell, which is one of the, you know, the problems that, um, you know, African descent people have is if, if you don't check your compatibility, then that can affect your children and, you know, um, so yeah, you are, that's the way it was done in the past. The really mm. like checking, that's the story of Adam and Eve in the garden and so on. That's what was happening as well, where there were being price bred, you know, to make sure that because people think there was only one Adam and Eve, but there were many Adam and Eve because they were experiments to try to correct the mistakes of the past. So they would take two people and make sure that their genetics were compatible. And in the case of the main uh, Adam and Eve that people know of like 49,000 years ago, that's what was being done, where they took um, two families. Um, Eve was like from what they call the Patarites, and Adam was from what they call the Watusi. And the Patarites were the little people, they were very passive, they were constantly getting um, abused by the reptilians and, and so they were too passive. So they, they thought, okay, we'll get one that's more aggressive. So Adam's genes were from like the Watusis and they mixed those to produce offspring to see if they can actually breed out that kind of like passiveness from the, the, the pygmies or the Patarites. So this experiment was done and then like later on they did another experiment. So it took a period of time to kind of like get to a point where they had offspring that was 
in their they call it perfect in their generation mm. so in today's way how people meet up you can just go to a club go to a party have a few drinks and then you end up in bed and have a child whereas with people who are thinking about the offspring they will do that whole arranged marriage you know the parents meet each other's um you know the the, the um the two couples and they plan and they do blood tests and all of that to make sure mm. that yeah and even the month and every like detail of what they call horoscope you're born under will have an effect because it's about energies that mm. are coming at that point for that child to come come through so mm. it's actually quite a complex thing yeah, uh, yeah there was um somebody that shared a story of they even picked a place time location yeah everything was so pre-planned yeah. they said okay in two years time there's going to be some constellation that's somewhere over this place in like south america and they pre-planned to align it with the woman cycles to be there at that time just to conceive the child mm. because they knew the energetic impact that portal has mm. on the child is yeah. insane and yeah it made me really really think like wow this you know like you said some people just get together make a kid mm. done and other people really go the lengths and yeah. um there's quite a few questions that stem from that. So mm -hmm. one of them would be... Um... Rahul Bat or greetings. I'm Saken from Ask Us Anything. If you're someone who would like to come and have these conversations, um, send us a video asking three questions so we can get a feel for what, um, you know, what you want to talk about. And, you know, we're in Croydon, Nashat, 101 Church Street. Um, and we've had great conversations with different people discussing all kinds of topics and we'll be really, you know, looking forward to speaking to anyone who wants to come and have a one to one um, and have a, yeah, and have a conversation about anything. So, yes, if you would like to do that, the link is below. Send us a video um, with yourself asking me or us three questions and then we will get back in touch. Judging sort of the state of the world now, mm. where it's escalating and you know, we're kind of going through like a spiritual war and there's just so many things. Do you feel like it's fair for us to keep having children and bringing them into this world? Or do you feel like, because obviously the world is a harsh place to bring mm. a child. And even myself, I'd love to have more children, but it makes me scared to think mm. of like, wow, I'm bringing children into such a hostile place. And it made me think, like, is it fair to have more children and bring them into this world? Obviously, we can do our best to safeguard mm. the child. But, yeah, it's a crazy place out here. Yeah. Um, obviously, from a Wolf's Bat point of view, um, there are a number of things I could say. The master teacher, Pana Bab Yanuno, Dr. Malika Z. York, said to us, as far as children are still being born, there's still hope for this world, mm. right? Um, and, you know, you can look at that in many ways, but there have been times when the planet was in such chaos that he was like, stop having children now because you don't know what beings you're bringing through. Because remember, we explained that three months prior, the nine months that people are aware about, that things are taking place in what people call the unseen world or the spiritual world. So there, there are preparations that you should be making to make sure that the being that you're bringing through is going to be a agreeable being as opposed to a negative being. Um, so it, in this day and time, I would say that it would all be down to the people that are having the child to be aware of, mm. you know, the sciences, because there is the art of sex <laughs> and, it, and, and a lot of people don't know that, you know, you've got this different... It's not just like why are you why are you having sex if you're not procreate if it's not for procreation, you see. So so there's like if you're doing it for what it was really designed for, which is to bring offspring, then you should really take the time um, and and learn and know what you're doing so that you're going to bring about the perfect child. But in terms of answering your question, no matter what you say to people, it's like saying to people stop having sex you're not going to be very popular and it's not going to go down very well. <laughs> <laughs> so people are going to do what they do. But um, if it's about having children, then yeah, you should definitely take the time and think about whether or not you want to bring a child into the world as it is now.
if you know what you're doing and you're able to provide and look after it and teach it and bring it up in the right way and it's not going to suffer and so forth, then yeah, um, by all means. But if you can't, I know people who say, I'm not having children, I'm not bringing children to this world. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like one of those questions that it, yeah, it's down to the people, isn't it? It's down to the individuals, what they mm. think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's quite an interesting one. Um, okay. Um, and the other question I'd have is, um, the, have you heard of like the concept of twin flames and mm -hmm. you know divine counterparts and so on and so on? Yeah. So I'd like to hear um, what your take is on whether every single person has like one counterpart that's designed for them and they have to find each other or if there's just so many other people that you can be compatible with mm. is it pre-written for some people to find a partner and for others to never find a partner mm. because you know sometimes i look at a person and they seem great everything's great but they really struggle to find a life partner mm. and then you look at other people who are just a mess and mm. they'll find someone that they'll be with for 20 mm. 30 years so yeah, that's my question. Yeah, so um, in, in Wusabat, we have actually a scroll called Soulmates, um, a part Tarot called Soulmates, which goes into this in great detail. Like, it's funny because whatever questions come to us, um, Dr. York has already written a book on it. So for us, it's like, okay, he's actually stated. So he has taught us that you have, in your lifetime, seven people that are your possible um soulmates um and they could be anywhere in the world right so you finding them or meeting up with them is um yeah but but um or shall i say if, I, if i'm not caught in it incorrectly yeah you would have had seven people that um you could meet and be with and they will be that that one um and the reality is if you find one of them and don't find the other six then you're good but you may never find any of them so um there is yeah there is that person because what it is is if you start to look at it from like i explained before that when we're here we're like a, a being of 180 degrees of what we call disagreeable and 180 degrees of what we call agreeable which makes you like 360 but the idea is to try and conquer one side or the other so if you conquer the disagreeable side then you become a full 360 degrees agreeable and this process because you also have counterparts that um, are on, an, on certain different realms then you then, let's say you become 360 agreeable, then there will be a counterpart who is 360 disagreeable, and then the two of you will come together, and then the process starts again. So then if the, the 360 conquers the 360 disagreeable, you become a 720 agreeable B, which means that you're in perfect tune with natural nature, and you will only do the will of agreeableness. Whereas if it's the opposite, so that the 360 disagreeable conquers the 360 agreeable, then that becomes a 720 disagreeable being. And they only do the will of... See, we say agreeable and disagreeable because to be so clear that it's not good or bad. Because people think of disagreeable and agreeable as good and bad. But you need disagreeable to do the work of what people will consider a disagreeable thing. So let me give you an example to, to kind of clear it up. So some people see death as a bad thing. And some people see death as just a natural progression or process. And if you're assigned the task of coming to take people's souls when they're crossing over, like the angel of death then people might look at you and this being called the angel of death in ancient Kemet or ancient Egypt is known as Anubus or Anupu. And people look at him like a disagreeable, like I said, the angel of death, but his job is to come and guide you through the process of going to the other side. So what I'm saying is that 
if your job is to do something that people call bad, then you're looked at or disagreeable, then people look at it as bad, but it's not a bad thing. It's just that someone has to do that job. So yeah, it's, it's about um, if you then, so to, the point to relate to the question is that if your counterpart or the soulmate was on the other side and you, you became a union, then I'm trying to take it to a point where it's not just about physical because on the physical realm, yeah, you can meet that person, but you have to think, what about on the spiritual or the soul mm. level? Because you're really trying to become one soul. That's that's the purpose of what you're doing. And when you become one soul or an energy, pure energy being, that's what a pure 720 degree being is. It's an etheric or pure energy being. And so it's the goal is to become one with your your soulmate on all, all levels, not just on the physical. So if they're your physical soulmate um, and then you live together and then grow together, you can actually continue on the other realms as well. I, I watched a video with someone um, about the twin flames thing and he was like, his partner now was his partner in a previous life and they both said they will meet up again and they actually did and they've done this many times. So it's actually possible to do that. Hmm. So I know I've given you a lot of information. I was going to say, that I, seems so interesting. I, um, is this something that you've covered in a previous video? No, I haven't. Oh, you haven't? This is the first time. You, okay, yeah. all of that stuff you talked about, the different, uh, the agreeable, disagreeable, the, the degrees of the person. I, I'd love to hear more in okay. depth. So I think you should make a video and I'm sure there's other people that wouldn't want to hear more okay, because yeah. it seems like a very in-depth mm. topic that yeah. would, yeah. I think that's a good idea. We will do that. But yeah, look look out for the scroll soulmates that we've got, um, which actually goes into detail about this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Very very interesting. Um, okay. And I think uh, maybe the next question we can go on to is, um, you know, when you do end up having children, mm. um, the journey of you teaching them the spiritual ways. Yeah. Um, how it should be laid out so i was reflecting on how other religions and cultures do it so for example in like judaism and the mystical sort of aspect of it you know you have to reach a certain age before some information is unlocked and i think it's like the age of 30 33 jesus sort of age mm -hmm. when you get to that age then you know you become uh, officially a man and then that's when they reveal more of the mystical side of, mm -hmm. of the religion and so on and so on so when it comes to teaching children yeah about life yeah. At what stages should we reveal the information? Should we wait for certain age milestones? Mm. Because obviously certain things might not be age appropriate. Or might, they might be. Mm. Uh, but then also you wouldn't be discussing all these in-depth things with a five-year-old because I don't think they really care. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, they yeah. just want to play. Yeah. So, yeah. What, yeah, I get your question. Yeah, um, the, it's like um, you wouldn't give a, a baby a loaded gun, right? Yeah. Um, again, this is why I will sabbat. I have to always bring it to Wolsa back because for me, um, because it's a culture and it has to address and deal with all these things, when, when we speak in general and say for what should we do, what should we do, of course, different cultures do different things. But the age is 13 for, you know, this is why in, even in the Jewish um, religion, they will say you take your bar mitzvah at the age of 13. And that's what Jesus did. That's what was going on because when he was born, he, he lived according to the Bible and the story, in Egypt for his young years, and then he came back um, at the age of 13. And, and that's when you take your bar mitzvah, where you're recognised as a man. And it's the same in our culture as well, because a lot of those things are borrowed. Um, but the best way to teach the children is um, through your example, how they see you live when they're growing up. But as you say, um, at the age of 13, or Okay, so there there are things that men do, as in humans, but then there are things that happen naturally with natural nature. So the the way to recognize a female being a female, or according to nature, is when a female has her first menstrual cycle, right? And at that point, nature is saying she's ready to be even if it's not appropriate or they're not um, intelligent enough or mentally or emotionally ready, their physical body, 
the fact that they can have children at 13 means that natural nature has got it to a point where like, I mean, some, some girls even a bit younger, like 11, 12. And for boys, it's when they um, have their first ejaculation. But ultimately, yeah, at the age of 13 in our culture is when you're able to start being taught and groomed on the ways of, you know, um, spirituality. And, and as you get older, the more, um, the more you learn and we have, um, we actually have orders, um, like we have a, a student association which you would then join and then be groomed and taught even more um, and then you know as you get older there are other orders where we have where you know the young men get um, through the you know the passage of rights for young men and then um, it will ultimately go into the other orders that we have for like the brotherhood the sisterhood and if your parents are should be Sabians or Nuwapians um, in the in the Wusabak culture, then you'd learn the things of the culture. It's the same as, like you say, in Asian um, households or even, um, yeah, Jewish households. They, they learn these things, then they follow their parents to the synagogue and, you know, they embrace their culture and then, and then it will go on to being, you know, like they arrange marriages and so they actually groomed all the way from the time they're born to the time they're an adult. So they kind of get shielded. But then sometimes, living in the West, um, peer pressure, going to school, um, social media, all of these things can actually make young people rebel against, you know what I mean, their culture because they want to like do what all their friends are doing mm. that they see in school and so on. So everything's like, mm, these days it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a bit of balancing act to... So yeah, to get it right. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, in your case, you've got um, your husband being Ugandan. Ugandan, is that right? Yeah, my son's there. So we're not together anymore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because so I was going to say there must be the two cultures. Yeah. In so terms yeah. Of so my son is what he would have expected. Yeah. Your so son obviously to do. there was that we. That's the whole thing. I went through that experience of you know, prior to that, I thought being in love was enough have a child right and that was that was it uh you know i was i was young and then after i grew spiritually i realized actually it takes a lot more than love mm. to start a family and to to you know create a child so i think that's what happened you know so many cultural dis differences so many different things it was yeah. difficult to come to an agreement of actually how will we raise this child what religion will we raise this child mm. what shall we teach you know is the mm. right thing to do so yeah this is why i really love, though, did you? what's that you didn't fall in love at the time, I thought that was love, you know. It's a joke. Listen, <laughs> fall. Fall, oh yeah. Because <laughs> that's what people say in it. I oh, fell yeah. in love. You should, fell. You shouldn't be falling. I was falling. flying away. <laughs> as, um... And um, <laughs> and uh, again, you know, this this is where, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of hard because love can be misinterpreted. Um, and is it falling? Because when you're falling, it's not a good thing. Mm. Um, but like, yeah, it's like, is it sense, science, sci logics that make sense? Or, do you know what I mean? Like what we were saying, like some mm. people look at looking at genetics and looking at the blood types and looking at all these things, like yeah. being a little bit more like, it's nothing to do with love. Even when people go as far as getting married and they have like, um, what do they call those agreements? Uh, prenups. Prenups. Mm. Yeah, it's like, is this love or is this a contract? Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? And so contract, you taught me about that one. <laughs> it's a contract. <laughs> Yeah, so um, what is love? Yeah, no, honestly. Um, but yeah, no, uh, my son is, he's an amazing child. Uh, but yeah, that was a, a struggle that I found myself. What do I teach the kid? Two parents with mm. opposing views. You know a kid is a baby goat, right? Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, this is this important what, because... The English language will trip you up. <laughs> yeah, that's why I do this. When they're falling in love thing. and the Honestly, kid... The contract. Yeah, that... but it's actually um, part of the spell because yeah. when you refer to them as kids, then you have to realise what you're doing. You're putting those words yeah. and then they behave like little baby it's dogs. It's spell, then... yeah. Exactly, so. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I think with that, I found that the the London culture yeah. is what, you know, was like, yeah, it's the same. And then that's fine for a relationship. But when you're looking to expand and create a family and merge two families together that's when you have to look at what happens 
you know, yeah. the step before that, and that's when you realise actually there's so many different things. Yeah, but... interracial interracial relationships. This is part of the the mm. reason why we um, say encourage don't yeah. don't encourage it because it's like you have to think about the child now. The child is caught up in two different worlds, and it's like might be pulled in different directions. Like if you're between black and white, it's like whatever you do, whichever way you go, you're not always going to be fully accepted. Mm. And and um, yeah, so very. I don't. That's why I think it would be difficult for a child being in that position. But normally, what ends up happening is that the child will identify. With, with either one of the sides that they feel more comfortable with mm. um, or both. Um, but yeah, uh, and it's like, for example, like African culture, they would probably like eat spicy food and things mm. like that. And like maybe the European culture. Maybe, potatoes. Yeah, so it's kind of like <laughs> you're going from one extreme to the other. Um, the, the climate, the, the sun, the, you know, it's, it's quite, I, I mean, yeah, I don't know what it's like to be a child caught up in that mm. sort of situation and I guess you'd have to speak to different people and see how they feel because like you said as well where if you go one side the other side is going to say you're betraying them yeah. or like you're being disloyal to them and then you go the other side and it's the same so this is why we say yeah maybe think about it before yeah definitely yeah. no that's definitely advice I'd give to people definitely think long term and mm. and you know not only it's whether can you and your partner compromise, it's about the child. Like you said, how will the child feel when, you know, they're split between so many different things? So like yeah. my son, when I'm, you know, he's going to the mosque one day, then he's going to the church and he goes to me, mum, is this illegal? What if they found out? Like I'm, <laughs> I'm going to both the places. And I was like, <laughs> That's actually funny. Is this illegal? I know he's a funny kid. And he, yeah. if, well, kid, a funny child. But ultimately when they grow up and, and find their own way, mm. I think that's the best thing. Yeah. I think obviously would... it will be appreciated that yeah. you've got to experience so many different things, but then it's also that back and forth that, you know, it's mm. an, ex it's a different experience and you know, everyone's got a different experience written yeah. for them, but I guess, for the ease but of for you as a, as a mother trying to just, what's the right thing to yeah. do? It must be quite challenging. Whereas for now, which religion is he? Well, he's doing both. He's, <laughs> he's doing all of them. But but this is the thing. <laughs> what? Why does he even need the religion at all? This is where I said, like, at what point do you introduce a child to it? If I'm going there yeah. and I don't have anywhere to leave him, should I take him to the church or to the mosque with me? Should well, we I guess leave the him question with a child? Is, why are you going? Well, <laughs> because what I'm research saying is, purposes. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. I mean, like, religion divides people. This is what it's, we're saying, yeah. like, because the Bible and the Quran, in the Quran, it actually says you shouldn't have um, Christians for, do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, so, there is a lot and I know families conflict. that one, mm. one parent is Christian, one is Muslim, but the Bible tells them that that shouldn't happen. So it's kind of weird because, like, it just creates divisions. Whereas if you both didn't subscribe to religion, mm. then you would just get along and yeah. do what you want without having this fear of being burnt in hell or doing the wrong thing because, yeah, it, it just it causes too much confusion. Yeah, I yeah. think that's the biggest hex in my life, religion. Religion has got to me. go. <laughs> I love it. I love researching it. I love it. But as soon as it comes to, you know, finding a partner, yeah. I've struggled to find somebody that's on the same sort of ideas as me when it comes to religion. And for a lot of people, yeah, such that's a what I'm saying. Let, let me because... clarify that because like, people might go, oh, burn him. He said religion's got to go. <laughs> um, discipline and the way you live your life and how you act and morals and ethics and all of that has nothing really to do with religion. Mm. You may learn that initially through religion because you're just like, because of control and fear and someone's telling you to go. But you don't actually need the religion to be that person. And I remember saying that if you're born in the jungle somewhere, never heard of the Bible or any other religions, you're just going to live your life to the best of your ability. And you kind of innately know what's right and what's wrong. And I'm saying that people have to come together, work together, fall in love, or not fall in love, <laughs> be in love <laughs> and... um on the fact that it works and not because of these man-made, do you know what I mean, mm. like opinions. That's all they are, opinions. I think you should do this. Well, who are you yeah. to tell me how to live my life or what I should do? So as a child, 
most children go to church or, or to the mosque or whatever with their parents because they really don't have a choice. Mm. Most of them, if you ask them, do you want to come? They'll say no. They'll, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when they get to a point where they're like, I mean, it would be good for discipline initially, but mm. that's just like to take you to a point where you can actually think for yourself. Yeah. yeah. I definitely agree with that. I think um, there's a lot of religious people that I've seen yeah. who are actually spiritually way more advanced than the actual spiritual people because they have the discipline. Mm. Every day they're doing their protection prayers, you know, they're, they're giving thanks. They're doing all these things that are through religion and that actually makes them spiritually stronger mm. than people that are spiritual. But they're like, well, I want to meditate today, t -t tomorrow I don't want to do anything. And then mm. their spiritual sort of aspects of their lives is actually a lot weaker because they don't have that discipline. Mm. So I think, yeah, religion, you know, it's a, it's a tool. Like I said, you can yeah. use it for, for either one. And I think if you yeah, encourage somebody to use it until a point where you're strong enough and you have your disciplines to then go off and leave that confinement of a specific mm. religion, I think, yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, and you know what? Another um, uh, interesting question that I had, uh, you mentioned, you know, death and the angel of death and the mm. disagreeable sort of uh, jobs that you have to do. So... Um, I had a discussion the other day on what we should be doing with the body when the mm. person dies. So, you know, different religions, different cultures have different things that happen to the body. So I'd like to hear more about, uh, yeah, your ideas of what should be done mm. with the body once it leaves. And then maybe as well, um, how does the soul leave? What happens with the soul? Does it leave through like the feet, the head? Yeah. Does it stay in the body for a certain amount of time? Or... You know, all these sort of mm. questions regarding death. Yeah, I think we've covered this before. Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of disposing of the body, we um, today, again, I have to base it on Musaba and our culture we can make because the life is in the blood. Um, the body takes a long time to decompose. And so you're still kind of, connected to the body because remember there's different parts of you so you have like your physical body your spiritual body your soul and the liquids and all of that and the the blood um, is in the marrow in the bone and because your blood is what really ties you um, to all your kind of your beings it's like the quickest way to move on is to yeah just cremate the body because um, you there's nothing left it just goes back into nature and to the essence. Um, in olden days, in our culture, in olden times, it was different because there were certain rituals and ceremonies that were performed, you know, like um, if you've heard of the canoptic jars in ancient Egypt where, you know, certain organs would be taken out. And I think in school, when you're learning history about Egypt, they'll tell you how they used to, like, take the brain out and um, take the, the various organs out and put them into these jars and then perform a ritual, um, the open of the mouth ceremony ritual, which will then channel that energy back home towards um, where we came from. And in our case, that would be like Sirius or Orion um, constellation. And even in um, Hinduism, even though Hinduism is not a religion, but they, they also do the same thing, that like they, they burn the body. Um, in ancient times, once those organs were taken out, then they there were um, embalming ceremonies, yeah? So, you know, the mummies, they used to mummify the bodies. But in today's day and time, um, there's so much going on with the organ harvesting, with, um, like I said, like just being trapped on this realm. Um, so, yeah, for us, that's what we, we do. We, we That's the best way of doing it. In terms of the soul, you have your glands, as in um, you have the pineal gland, um, and the pituitary gland, these are all like glands that people call chakras, where you, that's how the soul comes into the body and then it leaves through the feet. So when you're, um, if you speak to people that are passing, like in hospitals, they can actually feel that, mm. that essence leaving and then um, the body sets into what they call rigor mortis, which means that it just gets stiff because that life force is leaving. Um, what was the other part, I think? Was, was there any other part um, of your question? I, I, I don't think I've covered it. Yeah, right? I don't think so, but uh, uh, that leads to a few more questions. So then, uh, once the cremation process is done, what is done with 
the remains. Uh, like the ashes. Yeah. Stuff, so right? is yeah. that kept in a specific place where people can come visit, like some kind of you know yeah. commemorative sort of tree or or something like that, or does it get like what do you do with that? Or yeah, is I there... mean, some people again, it's the attachment. This is where we we always come back to this thing about letting go of people, places, mm. and things because if you keep it, you know, that's an attachment as well. Um, some people do. Um, others will just let it go into nature, take it to the sea and or you know put it back to the to the earth um, let it go into the air um, which means that it's, it's just gone back to mm. the to natural nature and to the elements that's what we would we yeah would because do. I'm always aware yeah. of like you know we mentioned the soul entrapment mm. where you know if somebody was to keep the remains somewhere and just box it up or whatever else would that impact anything uh, like, okay. or is it once the soul leaves yeah. and it's gone? whatever happens to the remains doesn't really affect the mm. rest. Yeah, remember that. We, we teach that um, not everybody has a soul. Mm. Um, so, and, and people will say, what do you mean by that? Because, you know, people are alive. Yeah, you can be alive because you have a spirit. And so, um, in terms of, when we're talking about disposing of the body, that's just the physical body. Because remember, the spirit is... Even though it's attached to the to the body, once the body's gone, the spirit and the soul are together. Um, if you have a soul, right? So let me make that very simply. Um, the the best way of explaining is that you know, like an egg. So you got the shell. Mm. The shell will be like the body. Yeah. This is just a very simple way of explaining it. And then the the white will be like your spirit, and then the yolk or the yellow will be like your soul. All right, so if you imagine at death, the shell is what we're talking about that's being burnt and turned into dust and then you can let it go into the elements or put it back into the earth or take it to the sea and dispose of it. Um, then you'll have, for those who have built up a, a high spiritual being, um, the spirit and the being, if, and the soul, sorry, if they are strong enough, they travel and then um, transcend the different realms, yeah? If the spirit and soul, are, or if, if it's just a spirit, and the spirit is trapped within this realm, then it becomes a disembodied being, so it still roams around, and it's just like, yeah, just roaming around, looking for physical bodies, or this is where, when we talk about, you know, like the churches, where people are in churches, and they get um, possessed by... They, they say, and I, I think we explained this on our very first video, about the, the Holy Spirit and the Holy Ghost. Because a ghost is a disembodied being that is still roaming around because it hasn't left, yeah? Um, and the, the ones with the souls, the souls also can be trapped if they haven't built up enough energy to then travel on. If they have, then the, the spirit and the soul will travel together and then um, the spirit can only go to a certain point and then the soul carries on. But the spirit helps to propel or take the soul further and then the soul mm. will go back. Um, if they're in union, then they will just go together. Again, we have many, many books. Like we have a book called The, the, the Spiritual You After the Physical You Dies. We have one called Soul Spirit, Soul Soul Spirit. We we really go into great detail about this subject more than probably anyone I know um, because this whole thing about people calling death, we know you don't mm. die because it's just energy transforming from one state to the other. So it depends on the person and it doesn't matter about again to the color of the skin and all of that because you could lose, you can lose your soul just by the things and the practices that you do, yeah? So um, if you don't have a soul, then, yeah, you're going to be trapped or you're not going to be able to continue the journey to other realms. If you do, then you'll go on to the next realm and continue living as you did here in the physical, but you're just living on another realm by the rules of that that realm. Mm. And then, um, then you move on again and you keep moving all the way to the higher realms. Until eventually you return back to what I said at the beginning, which is called the all, or the all expanding. And when you first arrive, you will be on the outer realms. Because if you think about, like the universe, you start from the middle and then it spirals outwards. 
So new souls, they come and they have to work their way from the outer realms to the center. This is where we also teach in Wu Sabat that you have 24 to 24,000 times to do this cycle of you might come back and start another mm. life and then you go through the process again until you perfect your being to the point where this time your spirit is strong, your soul is strong and then you leave and don't come back. I know that was a lot, but it's a very important question. Mm, yeah, yeah, well, that's, you know, they say one of the main things that's guaranteed is people will die. Mm. So it's a in, important yeah. topic. There's so many other questions I've got yeah. that have come from that. Um, I don't even know where to go. Um, <laughs> so, uh, okay, maybe uh, we'll go for when discussing death. Mm. The energetic impact of things like suicide mm -hmm. uh things like atomic bombs that literally yep. are like disembobulate discombobulating everything or whatever the word mm -hmm. is um you know and maybe even like natural disasters i guess yeah. that's different so all the kind of energetic effects of these things mm. on a person um and then kind of ties into that uh, other things such as like organ transfers mm. and blood transfusions and things mm. like that what kind of energetic impact does that also have mm. on a soul and body yeah it is, it's it's a very important um point and question now yeah energetically this is why it's so important because what whoever you mix with or wherever you go or things that you involve yourself with can affect you because they're different spirit beings you can house more than one spirit you can house multiple beings that are utilizing your body and they can even live in your cells so this is why it's very important when you say for example buy second-hand clothes or um you know you take on put like say other people's hair in your hair um in terms of weaves and things like that um yeah so energetically it's all about energy and you can your energy um can be drained or utilized so yeah, every everything affects you um, from from an ed energetic point of view. Now, what you're saying is like, for example, if there was an atomic bomb, yeah, that could obviously affect your physical body, but it will have an impact on your spirit and your soul as well. The music you listen to, the lights you you know, everything you take in, everything you do, the colors you're around, the clothes you wear, the fabrics you wear, this is how deep it is. But most people don't maybe take it that seriously mm. um yeah so yeah energetically it, this is where even dna or even exchanging fluids from someone else because you could be taking on all those personalities that that person has just from their dna um, we have another book called genetic kiss which goes into that and most people who read that book it um it really makes them think how important it is to not be frivolous in terms of like mixing your DNA and your your fluids it could just be a kiss that's why it's called genetic kiss because you've heard um you know the kiss of death and and people think it's just a phrase but really like you can take on somebody's like DNA spiritual essence and um, ultimately it can affect you in so many ways yeah, mm. I, I don't know if that answers yeah, your so, question. Uh, yeah, that mm. does, that ex explains it. Um, so would you say, because in the UK, as it sounds at the moment, mm. the law is everyone is uh, on, their body is basically on the organ donor register mm. as standard and you oh, have yeah, to I didn't opt touch out. on that. So yeah, so that. they um, they changed that thing during COVID. They snuck a lot of things in. Yeah, yeah. So now everybody's on the list as standard, mm. unless you opt out. Yeah. I didn't want to be on the list. Now I'm on the list. I haven't opted out. And it's something that I want to opt out of. Uh, mm. That's just my personal choice. So I'd like to hear, like, yourself. Mm. Have you opted out? Are you going to opt out? How yeah, do you feel about your... Yeah, that's a very interesting your... one. And the way I'm going to answer this question is this, yeah? Do you know, like, if you have a computer and you have an antivirus on the computer, yeah? You know what antivirus yeah, does, right? Yeah. It's supposed to protect your computer from being infected. Now, the people that make the antivirus have to stay in business, right? So, by you putting antivirus on your computer, it's going to put viruses on. 
so that they can stay in business. Just like the hospitals, they have to put medicines out, but the medicines will never cure you because then they mm. will be in business. Because if I made a, med a pill or something that cured you, it's like, okay, I'm only going to sell it to you once, right? So the, the whole thing about donor and organs is that it doesn't actually, it, it will work for a certain time, but it will never work fully because the, they are incompatible. So even when people get someone's heart or another, you know what I mean? Like even if you, if someone in your family, they give you the amount of pills you've got to take to maintain that heart. Um, it's only going to, and they still tell you have a certain amount of time to mm. live anyway. So, but just to keep it, um, because your body replenishes itself with the cells of the blood anyway after a period of time. So it doesn't always doesn't always work. Um, but yeah, in terms of being on the register, I said the antivirus thing because when I saw it, it was almost like it's like when they send you a survey to say, complete this, if this is you. In doing it, you're telling them who you are and then you've now actually told them about yourself. So you follow what I'm saying? So mm. it's like, if you're on the register or if, if you were asked to go on the register and you say no, they now know about you, don't they? Mm. If you say yes, they know about you. So either way, they know about you, right? So mm. it's like, what's the real point that, because in order, in order they can't just, um, can't like, I know what you're saying. It's like, I'm, I'm trying to explain it in a way where like there's sometimes where there's a box that says tick and to say yes or no, but whichever way you do it, it's still not going to be of mm. benefit to you. That's what I'm basically saying. So um, so you're saying is there like an ulterior motive, like a different agenda to what it is on the surface? Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So you think they're just scoping out to see who's... I'm trying to think of a good example, like... Because I've had this before where, like, you get an email or you get a, a text message or something. Yeah, remember during COVID, there was mm. this thing where you had to set your phone to something because they were going to oh, do yeah, some kind long. of yeah. a test, right? And I'm like, if you don't, they said, if you didn't set it to that, then what? You still were going to get it anyway. So how, how did they know? that you set it or didn't set it. But yeah, whichever one you did, the alarm still went off at that point mm. when, when that took place, even if you didn't set it to receive it. So how did that happen? Mm. To be honest, yeah, there was a lot of things they did during that time when it, there was an ulterior motive yeah. and it was clear to see, but with a lot of it, it's questionable what sort of information are they gathering? Because when you start thinking about the reasons why, mm you start to think, are they really that sinister? Are they really that crazy to be doing these things on these sort of levels? Well, pe people, are, well, we're not, we, you said it, a Agent Smith is very creative. Um, so yeah, would you like to donate your organs, yes or no? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, I, I but, don't you know. know what? It's almost like the draconian measures of what you're saying is like, and, and this is where, are you really in charge of your body? And exactly. Is, do, do, does it belong to you? That's and, the thing. Um, and I had to look at the organs that they actually put out. Mm. It's basically pretty much everything. And then it's not necessarily to another person because people are like, oh, you know, I want to give away yeah, my yeah, organs yeah. for someone. It's not that. A, a small percentage goes to another person because yeah. of compatibility. Where does the rest go? This is what I they mean. They said scientific research. We, we can say things and like... I can say, I need this body part to do my scientific research and God knows what I'll do with it. Yeah. And God knows what they're doing with it because obviously they, they won't disclose that and then once you're dead anyways, it's not like you'll, you know, find out where your body parts went. Yeah. Um, so I guess to link back to the other thing you said, so if let's say now I was to pass away tomorrow and I haven't opted out yeah. and there's no family to intervene, my organs have been given away, how does that impact my soul leaving because you know you said you cremate mm. get rid of it your your body and your your soul and your essence can leave easier how would that impact that now my organs are in a lab the other half are in other people's bodies still on this earth mm. yeah i mean that's a good question but the body will not always it's it, i mean depends on how they keep it but this is why mm. it's about it's really about your spirit and your soul not mm, your body. Yeah. Yeah. And this is why I don't get attached to the body. And like, you know, you see people who, for example, believe that 
they're here because of like you know the biblical stories of um samson and all that kind of stuff like people would not cut their hair and think like there's power in your hair there is but you have to also think if i shave my hair off mm. then what yeah Do you know what i mean don't be attached to things to that to that point and there's a riddle yeah a riddle that the master teacher told us many years ago and um i'm going to share it with you if you take a cemetery yeah if you remember any cemetery you know since you were a child right the cemetery is a particular size, right? Let's say it's 400 by 400 square. If that cemetery has remained the same size all your life, right? How is it that people are still being buried in that cemetery? Well, I heard they just stack them on top of one Think another. Of, but then yeah. after that... yeah. I don't know. <laughs> like, this is this was the first thing most people said, like, stacking them on top mm. of each other. But think about it, like, how how do you make more space? Because if this is the grave, mm. right? Because they dig it down yeah. um, six feet, yeah? Six feet. So if this is the, the six feet of the grave, and you've put one, two, three, four, let's say five, if you're talking about the stacking, and it's reached the top, Mm. How do you get another one in? And even then, when they purchase that land for the original coffin, the rest can only be given to the family members because you kind of own that land or whatever else, the way it works with politics. Yeah, no, but I'm saying... So even I, then, you can't just stack everyone on top right, of anyone. Right, so I'm saying in terms so of the stacking, of to, to add another one, you would have to take all of them out to dig a bit further, <laughs> won't you? Yeah. So you can push everything down. Or or how are you going to stack more on top? Of, if, the, if you can stack, say, six... And then after that... Right, now let's, let's say that grave has been there for 100 years mm. and the, the space is still the same and every single one of the graves has been stacked up to six. Then what happens after that? If you then could, the government if you, take the excess <laughs> for their research. <laughs> because, because the graveyards don't get expanded, they mm. don't grow. They have been the same way all the time. I'm saying that to say... You really have no idea what happens to the to the bodies once they've been put in there and mm. everyone goes away because you just come back and yeah or even even sometimes when people are being cremated it's like you see it then you don't see it so yeah. there's so many questions I guess we what could they ask. said with with COVID you know and people might think oh this is conspiracy theories and we're gonna go like it's get not, people it's, all. But these are things that if you really mm. think about it, it's like there's, there is a lot of organ harvesting. Yeah. And like you're going back to your question about what, you know, what happens to you. They take people's bodies and things for research. And, and this is why it's important to have a will and documentation mm. and things that you have specified to happen to your, to your body when, you're, when you crossed over or passed. And a lot of people don't, they don't mm. take the time to write wills and make sure their family members know exactly what they want to happen. Um, yeah, and it's something that, like you said, everyone's going to go, right? And no one knows when. So most people get caught out because they haven't prepared for it. And it's important to prepare for it. Like you would prepare for your wedding. Mm. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Most people are like, oh, like, I probably won't die anytime soon. So yeah. I'll do it another time next year, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. You know what, what's interesting? Obviously, a lot of it just seems to be dark. Mm. And it's just like, wow, it's a little bit depressing. I've had a look at That's all my... That's a racist comment. Dark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing with you. But this, this is if English, I say, right? At what point? Do I, am I cancelled already? No, no, you're not. But go on. I, I know what you mean. A lot of it seems to be... Because the thing is, what it is, is that we are... We're out here mm. trying to be, you know, spiritual, enlightened beings. And, you know, we're trying to do our best. And every single day, we are mm. fighting, you know... Forces. Yeah, forces yeah. that are keeping us down. So, it's hard to be positive when every single aspect of your life is being targeted. Whether mm. it's the food you're eating, the children you're raising, what you're wearing, what you're saying, what you're doing, mm. is being attacked. So, you know, trying to like, find something more positive to, to ask. I feel like I'll ask anything positive, and it will be about what you should do, what you shouldn't do to protect yourself mm. from the unseen forces. So, 
Yeah, this is why, you know, when I ask the question, like, is it even fair to bring children into this world? Because mm. it's, it's a depressing, <laughs> it's a depressing place. I mean, it's a matter but, of outlook. Remember, yeah, I was going to say, it, it, it's, it is. It's like, mm. is the glass half empty or half full? And is it a six or is it a nine? Like, mm. you can choose to go, oh, it's all doom and gloom. And, <laughs> or you can just really enjoy your life, you know, do the mm. best you can, eat the best you can, and just be as positive as you can. Because ultimately, you're building up that energy. That, that that part of you that it's not about the physical world. This is what I'm saying, like, and your thoughts, your energy will project and bring things into your world, into your environment that don't give you that gloom and doom. And uh, I, and the thing is, the, the, the powers that be rely on that energy because these entities, these beings that they feed off of that negative energy. So they want everyone to feel like that. But in reality, it's not that bad. It's actually, mm. it's like even these elite that we're talking about, they're actually a small group compared yeah. to the masses. But they give you the impression that they're so powerful. And then we give those who are subscribing to it, they give them the power. I was going to say, I bet they're more fearful of everything more fearful collapsing. Of, exactly, and, that's what's happening now. And, so, um, yeah, was, yeah. Like, that's why um, Dr. York is here, or Pana Babylonian, in the sense of, or any put, any teacher that is come, but he specifically come to change this paradigm. Mm. And whether people accept that or not, that's down to you and the reality of you experiencing him and what he's done and what he's doing for yourself. So, um, it's it's uh, they say the great and dreadful day of the Lord is great for some people. And it's mm. dreadful for some people because if you've been living your life with that, you know, control, fear, rape, stealing, killing, murdering, and it's your time to go now. It's like, your time's up. Mm. If you haven't been doing that, you have nothing to fear. So it's like the, the majority of people are being bugged down and suppressed with this negativity to the point where to the point where it makes them feel helpless, but they are so powerful. And that's what, you know, the videos we do and this whole dialogue of Wu Sabat and what Wu Sabat is about. It's like Nine Aoife is positive. It's about living. It's about rejuvenating people and turning on that spirit, that soul mm. and getting you back to be that vibrant being. And the rest will fade away because it's going to fade away and it's a different day and time. So don't ever feel like it's all... Because that's the power you give when you think that way, you know. And I know it's, it's not easy um, because, like you say, the forces are constantly on you, like, yeah, but mm. it, it's by design. Yeah, I agree. And you know what? Personally, myself, in yeah. my actual real life... I don't feel that way. Mm. I live such a happy life. Like for years and years, everything is so positive. Even if, you know, the bad things happen, mm. I actually don't feel that way. And I've yeah. always felt like, you know, there's different levels and we're all on the same world on mm. different frequencies. And there's a lot of people obviously suffering and they can literally be your neighbor mm. and they can be living in literally hell. Mm. And I'm literally living in heaven. Everything is mm -hmm. amazing. Even if I'm having trials and tribulations, so, you know, you, you get through it and, and it's great. And um, Dimensional shift. Yeah, That's and I exactly think within that, happened. we can all live on the yeah. same world and experience it differently. And I, I think, you know, before I used to feel like, should I be feeling ashamed that I'm feeling so much joy while mm. my neighbours are suffering or whatever mm. else? But, you know, we all help each other out. And, and I think it's just one of those things, like you said, it's not all do doom and gloom. Mm. We shouldn't feel like we shouldn't be happy. That's where the people that are doing well and are positive, they then have to reach out and yeah, help the like others. the service to self service to others yeah. after you build yourself yeah, up yeah, exactly. then you become service to others and you mm. help everyone else and level that's up right. and that's right yeah, um, yeah you know um but yeah i'm looking at that picture over there yeah it's uh, a guy in a i don't know if you can get it on um camera maybe you can put it in later yeah you can put it in later I guess. um so i'm not too familiar with your teachings right. um mm -hmm. you know I've, I've tried to keep it neutral yeah uh, so i didn't you know, brush up too much. So yeah, I, was, I, 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 I take it for picture. granted that. Yeah, because yeah, you know what? There's, there's. Um, I was looking at the pictures. It's a man with a beautiful outfit, looking crisp, looking clean, mm. and it's got like this UFO looking mm. light lamp dish, and he's kind of the light is coming out of it, like kind yeah. of like a genie in a bottle thing. And um, yeah, can you explain who is that man? What is happening with the light? What's the significance of the green? <laughs> yeah, what is that little dish thing and? Tell yeah, me more about uh, I mean that. that's that's an excellent question, and the thing is that 
a picture tells a thousand words, as you say, yeah. Um, what you're talking about is actually a craft, an extraterrestrial craft that is, as you say, showing him coming down from it. Um, he represents, he is our he? teacher. He's mm. Dr. Malachi Z. York. Mm -hmm. That's the name that a lot of people are familiar with. But remember, names are titles. And um, so he has many titles. And anyone from even a religious background or a spiritual background would have come across him in some way, shape or form. Um, meaning that, for example, if you're a Christian and you, you read and study the Bible, the Bible, um, the New Testament talks about a time coming when they call it Armageddon, they call it um, the rapture, they call it, you know, a new world um, coming out of heaven and so forth, right? But if you read like the book of Revelation, which is the book that they say is of the end times, it talks, if you read like Revelation 1, it talks about someone coming and this person is referred to as Michael or People think it's Jesus, but it says, uh, it's the, the book of Revelations is Jesus' book, and it says that he will send his angel. And, and if you translate in the language, in the Greek, it would be Angelos. And if you went to the Old Testament, it's uh, Michael, right? Or in Arabic, it's Mikael. And it translates as my angel or Malachi, yeah? And the books of the Old Testament, um, chapter 4, verse 2, talks about the same thing because... The last book in the Old Testament is the book of Malachi and the last book in the New Testament is the book of Revelation. Both of them are talking about a new time when all false things will perish and there will be a new world and, um, you know, those who make it, they call this, you know, the rapture that some people will be, like, saved and taken up. And that story translates throughout all religion. So the person you're talking about um, in the picture, that's who that is referring to, Right. And he's known by many names throughout different cultures as Murdoch in ancient Sumeria or Marduk. Um, and yeah, he's here. And, and OK, let me go back, because sometimes we forget to explain this, that he's the spiritual being, his name is Yanun. But he's the, the being that is personifying or incarnated in the person you see in the picture who we refer to as Dr. Malachi Z. York. So he was born like me and you, but you have um, beings that exist on higher levels. These are the type, this is where we're trying to aspire to go when we pass on or when we elevate, mm. as I was saying to you, to become a 720 degree pure energy being. Um, so a lot of what he teaches and the things that you've heard me speak about today about when you die and, you know, the things that happen about, how you transform from a agreeable to a disagreeable and so on and so forth. These are all the teachings that he's come to teach. And he was teaching this officially since 1970. And he exposed a lot of the elite and the things that they do in terms of the books that he published. Um, he published books like The Year 2000 and What to Expect, The Millennium Book, The Luciferian Conspiracy, man from planet risk so when i said that the craft you're seeing because he's a being that's come from somewhere else as in he comes from a planet called risk and a lot of the times when he was teaching these things back in the 70s people were thinking he's he's crazy he's making all these things up so over years and years of years of like information coming out other people starting to teach about like you know, the Anunnaki stories, the reptilians and the Pleiadians and, and then like a lot of people seeing UFOs and over time people have got to see that all that he's been teaching for so long has come mm. to tr to be true. And so, yeah, that's what he's here to do, to teach these facts and to bring about this new world that we're going to call the new cycle or the sun cycle or people call it the uh, the Aquarian age from the Piscean age. So this was actually something that because people who have recorded things for thousands of thousands of years, these these prophecies or stories were already written. And um, if you've only been around for like, let's say 6,000 years, you might not know about things that took place like 10,000 years ago or even further. So some of this stuff was already recorded. So that's 
who, um, when I was on my spiritual journey, and I was learning, and I and I did the, like what you said you did, like going to Christianity, because I was grow, I was brought up in it. Then I went into Islam, and then trying to find answers. Then I finally came across him, and that was it. Like all my questions were answered. I started to read the books that he's been publishing. So you hear me quote a lot of the books, um, and nothing compares to it. No one else on the planet. Nothing I ever came across. Um, until this day, this is why Wusabat is able to answer so many questions because he's published over a thousand books covering everything from, do you know what I mean, talking about extraterrestrial, talking about before we're born to when we're born and where we're going. And people say, how does he know? Um, nobody knows. But if you speak to people who have been listening to him for like 50 years now, people who have died and gone and visit him and then information related to the, their people that are still alive. I mean, there's just so many things. There's a book called My Brother the Extraterrestrial by his sister where many people um, give testimonials of, you know, the experience. I've had my own experiences. So to, uh, it's a big question you're asking, but he's Dr. York. Um, he's the physical being, Dr. York. The spiritual being is Yanun. Yanun is one of the 24 elders, um, which when you read like any of the religious books, they talk about him. If you went to Islam, they speak about him as well, but they call him um, Al-Qadir. That's the name, in, which means translates as the green one. Um, if you went to any, any kind of religion, they speak about him, but mm. people just misinterpret him for, say, Jesus or somebody else. So, yeah. I could literally talk about him for the whole of the interview, mm. but I uh, hope that's given you some kind yeah. of picture. Yeah, it yeah. has. I was, yeah, I was, like you said, a picture speaks a thousand words, so yeah. analyse all the symbolism in it and everything else. And yeah. Um, so anyone who wants to <clears throat> develop or learn more about themselves, their physically, spiritually, um, the best thing they could do is start reading his books and and just judge for like we say mm. make up your own mind because he speaks to you he will speak to your soul he when you read the books or like when you develop you will have a connection or contact with him directly and then you will find out for yourself you know mm. like how you would go into anything else and um research it i would say do the same with this and then kind of see for yourself what mm. where it takes you yeah mm. could tell you some very interesting and uh stories that people have relayed to me even just since doing awesome vision like um videos meeting people on the street and the things they're telling me you know like i don't want to really go into their business here but yeah it's amazing what kind of experiences people are having mm. so yeah i hope that's answered your yeah, question yeah no it has um yeah, yeah i yeah i've been like looking into uh some of the things but yeah there's a lot of yeah. material, like even upstairs, mm. uh, there's a lot of books. And like I said, a thousand, it's yeah. a lot of time to, to get through them. So I think with that, obviously, as you know, somebody that's starting out, mm. uh, you know, I did ask you, which one should I go for first? Yeah. And I guess with that, it's just whatever you're kind of drawn to at the moment, mm. because every single topic basically is covered. Yeah. From every and single and that's the life. thing, like, again, going back to what mm. we were saying about the black and white thing, he has come to give the truth. No matter who you are, whether you're Mason, Christian, Muslim, Jew, um, scientist, historian, archaeologist, anthropologist, it doesn't matter who you are. It's like, this is the truth. This is how it is. Is it right or is it wrong? And, and what happens is like some people are afraid when somebody has that type of power. And this is why he's been incarcerated, mm. because when he was teaching about things that the government were trying to hide back then, you know, like a lot of the like Project Blue Book, um, the Rainbow Project, the Adama Project. Um, he was, you know, the uh, Majestic 12. Um, he was talking about, you know, the other side of the moon and what was going on over there. Um, reptilians. He, he was just putting out so much information. They were like, but remember, he was saying even from the very get-go, I'm not from here. Mm. But people thought 
Yeah, right, you know, but um, the information is really, like, not from here. Like, the things, and the thing is, the questions that people asked formed the books. So it mm. wasn't like, it's like you could ask him a question about something that you think no one's able to answer, and then he would just write a whole book about mm. it. Do you know what I find interesting? That you said it was in the 70s. Mm. So what I noticed, there's a lot of channeled works yeah. that came out at that same time. Yes. From the, like the Law of One and all these other things that all kind of came through at the same time from different people. Yeah. And it's all kind of teaching a very similar thing, which to me personally, that adds more to the credibility of it. Yeah, because it, certain, mm. um, like before something happens, sometimes there is like, like for example, even though we're saying the end of the um, moon cycle ended in the year 2000, it actually started way before the build-up to that. So when he came, there were others that came with him as mm. well. He explained this and there were different teachers all of, over the world. Um, and it was that time where you saw a lot of um, spiritual, like people that were like the hippies and things like that. Everybody was becoming more like spiritual and like you had a lot of people from like, um, the Asian, the Eastern, um, you know, like gurus and stuff like that. So you're right that that kind of kickstarted this new kind of world that we're living in now that is coming into more and more. Um, and yeah, it's either you you shift your consciousness and shift dimensions and shift to this new world or you're going to get left behind. It doesn't matter who you are, whether mm. you're black, white, green, yellow, it's a matter of, that's why those comments we were talking about at the beginning are funny because when you're really dealing with um, divine love, when you're really dealing with higher consciousness, you really, and again, to answer your question about what should you start with, this is why uh, myself and my brother um, Eric um, Asaru, we put a book together because when we started doing the OSM Vision videos, so many people around the world was just like, this had an impact on them. Mm. And they were like, where should we start? And we were like, okay, we've got to put something together to help fast track you. Um, not in the sense that you, you don't have to do the work because you mm. can't just like, like, we said last video, go on a retreat one day and I'm spiritual. Mm. You still have to put in the work. But what it did was that, like from 1970 to now, 2024, which is like 50 years of information, we were able to like concise it to a nice little book that kind of gave you everything. And then like, okay, now you can go more detail, go into mm. this, go into that. Um, so that book will help you. And then from that, we realized some people were like, they don't like reading. <laughs> Um, so we were like, okay, we're going to put an online course together because the online course means that you can do it in your own time and it actually is audio, so you don't have to read. Mm. It will read to you. We have videos and it's very interactive and you can still ask us questions. So from the, the book is still available and I would say start there because it then gives you like a synopsis, points you, it just literally tells you the things that are true and the things that are not true based on world events. And then, then it goes into the detail, like, okay. Then you know in your head, like, for example, was Roswell real or not? Because this is something that a lot of people are like, oh, the crash in Roswell. And there's debates and people saying it was and some are saying it's, it wasn't. But we would just go, yeah, it was real. Because we know about the beings that were on the craft and mm. what happened. And, you know, um, some of them died, some of them survived. And he knows that information. So he's already broken it down to us like I was saying in a book called Man From Planet Risk, back in the 90s, you know, so, um, and that was like what Roswell was, what, 1947, I think? But yeah, so there's a lot of information that he just gave us the actual facts. And um, so you get that straight away and then you can decide like, okay, he talks about all the things that matter to you, like, like we're talking about manifestation, uh, meditation, relaxation, spirituality, the different religions and, because when people hear us talk, because he took us through the different schools, we had to master all of the religions. So when you hear me speak and I'm quoting the Bible, quoting the Quran, quoting like the Torah, it's because we had to do an intensive study, a bit like what mm. you did. But not only did we do that, we had to go back and study the languages, study the Sumerian mm. text, 
going to the ancient Egyptian or Kemeti and stuff. Because, sorry, the last point, because um, you said this the last time about the people who, the awoke folks that think they're awoke, mm. but they're not. But then, because when you speak to some people, they'll be like, they're Rasta or wearing red, gold and green. Then they'll wear an unk. And then they'll, it's like they just mix and match so many different things. And you're like, you think you're awoke, but you're actually confused because mm. you don't know enough about each one of those to be able to really hold your own on that. Like, people take a lifetime to become, like, study Christianity or read the Bible. People take a lifetime to be a Muslim. People can take a lifetime to, like, really study the Torah. And it's like, how are we able to do all of that in one lifetime, plus all the extraterrestrial stuff, plus all the other stuff that mm. you hear people asking the questions about? It's because of his being. He, and he says he has 700... 76 trillion years of information that he has to share and give us before they try and take him out. Mm. Yeah, because um, it's a different day and time we're living in. And it's either you're ready or you're not, or you're, you're afraid or you're not, or you're going to... Um, mm. Yeah, because ultimately you have to ask yourself the question, are you ready and mm. do you want to go on that journey? Uh, yes, yes, Morpheus. <laughs> <laughs> red pill, blue pill. Yeah, red or blue pill. Absolutely. Um, you know what? That that brings me up to um, to something where maybe it's like asking for advice. So mm. I've got a um, lot of people, because I share a lot of this stuff on my social media. I've yeah. got like my little account and I'm always open about my journey. So where I've kind of been for every religion, I've had a lot of people who have started to awaken. Mm. Um, I had the awakening at a young age. It was about 13 or so. So, you know, I've been yeah. on it for a long time. And I had done it all by myself. Mm. And now I've got people that are coming to me and they yes. are grown up, 30 yes. years old, you know, 25, you know, maybe mm. even more. And they're finally starting to awaken that actually, wait a minute, mm. there is more to life. Mm. There is more to than whatever this religion, there's more to what my parents told me. And they come to me for advice, like, what do I do? Mm. Where do I go? Mm. Is it true? Is this the devil making me question it? And, you know, they're having a whole <laughs> identity crisis. Yeah. And the thing is with me, I'm like, wow, I've, I've been doing this for 15 years. I've dealt with it. Yeah. And they asked me for advice. How do I cope with it? And I don't know what to say because I'm like, well, it took me a long time. Mm. I don't actually have advice. So for people that are awakening and they are looking for guidance mm. and support, how can we be a good family member or a good friend mm. and support people in their awakening journey when their whole world is collapsing, they feel alone, mm. they basically have like that dark night of the soul kind of thing. And yeah. Yeah, all these emotions, they don't know what to do. Yeah. How do you advise them? Because my advice is like, look, mate, I don't know. You're just going to go for it. It's your journey. But mm. that's not very encouraging. No, the first thing is to recognise the power within themselves. Mm. Because when people feel afraid and helpless and all that, it's because they are first looking for someone else to, do, to deal with mm. it. But you have to teach them or help them to recognise that um, the power is within them. And if they have that initial kind of like confidence then the next question is like we just said <laughs> red or blue are you ready like mm. do you read or is it just something like it's not a fashion or a fad or you know like it's the in thing now everyone's all spiritual and mm. like if you're serious and more than likely if they are then your example is the next thing they look into you right and this is why you need to know for yourself because if you don't know how are you going to then pass mm. it on this is why it's important for you to go on the journey which you're on. And I'm saying like, this is a new thing for you, as you said, mm. because you've done all the others. So now here's another one for you to go through and see how, how it pans out for mm. you. And if it works out well for you, then again, you're the example, right? But really, the best advice you can give them is, that's why we did the OSM vision, like ask us anything. First, start asking the questions because when you ask questions, you get the answers and then you do your research and then it's like a journey. You keep learning and learning. And if you do want to then take it further, we have free classes every Saturday, every mm. week where they can come and you have to be ready to deal with the truth. If you can't deal with the truth, then it might not sit well with you because it doesn't matter who you are, like you've got to reckon with the truth. And when they start coming to classes, then they get to know more about us, get to know about you know, Dr. York, get mm. to know about the community. And if they want to 
take it further, then they become a part of the family. And the, then there's more to learn and the doors mm. keep opening and it's really down to you how far you take it. Um, some people, you find people that were here like following and reading the books back then, 1970s, 80s, 90s, and then they left it, especially after he got incarcerated mm. because people forget and they think like, like, like people say things like, if you say, I'm God, they say, well, if you're God, then how can you be put in prison or how can anyone do anything to you? Because they think the concept of what they have in their mind of a God is not what a real God is. Like, meaning like the concept of a God being in heaven somewhere, just sitting down on a throne or just someone or something that you can't connect with, that's not what it is. Mm. The real gods are the kind of gods that Jesus was here. Like he walked the earth. And, see, now people are going to say he didn't exist. But I'm saying the, <laughs> the characters of the people that you've seen in the world. Okay, let's bring it down to people like even Martin Luther King, Malcolm X. Um, you know, different people in the world that have had to go through this battle and struggle. They are real people that like Buddha, you know, I mean, we can go on and name so many names. It's that type of a God that you're the God that has to take on the responsibility of not waiting or expecting somebody else to do it for you. And then once you do that, you realise that everyone that has come, they had to face these forces with the negative elite forces, whether it was the Sanhedrins and the Pharisees in Jesus' time or, you know what I mean, with, no matter who you is, you've had to face these mm. beings that, are on so-called devil's side, but there has to be this battle and then ultimately one or the other is going to triumph and that's what we're doing now. So, yeah, go on your journey, mm. um, read the books, recommend the books, send them to, to come and buy the books, read the books, ask questions in classes and just let them know it's your journey. Like you said, yeah, you, you have to go through the journey yourself, but... I'm giving you the guy. At least now you can point them to us. Mm. Where, you know, we're she can here. even come with me because I'm new yeah. to, to you guys. Yeah, yeah. Come so to, you come to class. She's new to uh, all of it. I'm yeah. new to this. Regardless, we're on the same page. So I guess yeah, yeah, yeah in that way, yeah, we can support. At least we're here. I don't know any other organisations that can take the heat like we do. Yeah, like ask us anything. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. definitely. I, I agree. Li I like OSM some vision. They came up with that actually, and it's, it's yeah. I've got on the comments and. Yeah. Normally, other organisations block, delete, delete, block. <laughs> well, you guys leave it out there. Yeah, no yeah. matter what the question is, you don't mind being grilled, which actually for me shows that you're strong in your beliefs and you are strong in knowing that what you guys are teaching is true mm. because you're not afraid yeah. of the question. And you see, again, it's because of English. Yeah, the English When language, you say man. belief, we that's why we say we I don't know. deal with belief. But it's, I have to do this because mm. that's how easy it is because a belief... You can tear up, tear up a belief so quickly. Like mm. it would take literally just a few minutes to, to dismantle a belief because it has no foundation. It's just like I believe this. All right, cool. Prove it then. And if you can't, and they people will say that with us with certain aspects of things, we will say yeah. Like if I can't prove something, I will say okay, I can't prove it. I don't know, right? But we know somebody who can. You see, it's like for example, mm. people say. How do you know that risk, this planet risk exists? I'll be like, how do you know Jupiter exists? Exactly. How do you know? Do you know what I mean? It's like, but they want you to be able to prove to them something they can't prove to us, right? Mm. I mean, they will say, oh, we've seen a picture of it because what? Because NASA said there's a, you know, yeah, a solar I'm sure system someone can draw a picture of risk right. as well. But the difference is he came and he said, I come from a place where there's a tri solar system, meaning mm. three suns. And at that time, they hadn't discovered, a, you know, tri-solar systems yet. And now they have. Mm. So now what do you say when the evidence has now come to match what he said mm. before? So these are the kind of things where we say, like, I can't prove if I have never been to risk that risk exists. But if he says he comes from risk and he's telling me about things from risk, regardless of what we ask him, then it's like me saying, I think I said this before, like, you, you, you say you come from, say, Uganda. Someone's never been to Uganda before, but they're going to have to take your word for it because you're going to give the description, the explanation, mm. everything about Uganda to the point where it's so detailed. How would you know that if you didn't come from there? Do you see? So, mm. 
Yeah. Have you got any more? Or is that it? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know what? We can, we can wrap it up. Um, I think the last point I did want to mention is... Yeah. Uh, also in the comments, I did see a lot of comments of people saying, oh, like, you know, um, Sikhan keeps saying something and then he keeps backtracking on it and he's like contradicting himself yeah, yeah. or whatever else. And that, I think, is linked to the English language. Because mm. often I'll say something too and then I'll say something else and it sounds like it's contradicting. But to people that know and understand the knowledge, yeah. they'll see that it's the same thing. But on the surface, because the English language is so limited... you can use a word that's a little bit different and yeah. somebody else will interpret it totally wrong. Not so, even that. Like, when you I have... Just, yeah, the English language is so limited. So yeah. when we discuss all these things, sometimes it's not the, the, the topic. Sometimes you have to kind of take a step back and think, yeah. if I was to remove the veil of the English language and the limitations that it has mm. on such complicated topics, what, what are they saying? So, You're right. I mean, that's definitely one point. Mm. But the thing is that if you do that, then they want you to bring it to something they can relate to or understand. Mm. And so sometimes you have to use English to try and explain things that if I just spoke in our language, they would know what the hell I was talking yeah. about. But in addition to that, when you have so much information, somebody might ask you a question and there are so many different angles to answer that question that you might answer it in one way, but there's another like 10 different ways. Mm. And the next time I'm asked that same question, I might remember some more information. And then sometimes I might add bits onto what I said before. And so I'll give you an example. The last time you were here, you asked me about um, secret... Um, you said, we're talking about ma the Masons and stuff, and I said about secret societies. And I remember saying that um, the thing about the secret societies is that there are no secrets. Now, if I just leave it there, someone's going to go, hmm, but I'm in the... And there are secrets, mm. you see. But now, if I sp speak on that today, I might say, okay, I meant that certain, let's say for the Euro Masonry, they don't have any secrets because the people that gave them the secrets only gave them a certain amount, mm. which is now common knowledge. Mm. But there is more that they don't know. So I'm saying it like to say, in the Euro Masonry, they don't have no secrets. They're waiting to try and find out the secret, but they will never find them out because the people, like, for example, they went into Egypt to receive the three degrees, right? And, and some people say, oh, in Mason, they, Masonry, there's like, some, some guy came in the shop the other day, he was like, there's 93 degrees. And I'm like, there's only three degrees in Masonry. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, the other degrees are honorary degrees. You only have three degrees, which is the Enter the Apprentice, EA, Or fellow craft and then you have master mason and then you know depending on how much you know about all of this you go down the york right or you go down the scottish right right and then they will say there's 33 degrees but there's a reason for that right because it goes into a lot of stuff but 33 um adds up to six but it's also at 32 right remember that water the boiling point of water mm. is what and then you you die and then you are woken or born again at 33. Jesus was 33. It's a whole mm. heap of symbology that goes into that. But my point is that with each topic, it's like an onion. The more you peel off the layers, the more information you can get depending mm. on how the person answering the question chooses to, how far they want to go, what they want to give you, mm. who they're talking to, the alchemy that they're performing. You know what I mean? So mm. people, that, that's why we say, If you feel that way about a question that I've answered, just ask it again. Mm. Or say, you said this and you said this and it seems to contradict each other. Can you clear it up for me? Mm. Then you'll get another answer. And then, you know, it keeps going like that. So rather than just make a statement like, oh, he, he does this, he, <laughs> ask the question and then we will clarify it. That's all we have to do. Just keep asking questions until you're satisfied with the answer. Because mm. you can ask me the same question and I can answer it 10 different ways and you get more information mm. every time. And you know? even then, I might hear it differently because I'm a different person. And then you person. might ask I'm a different else. person now yeah. to what I was when I last saw you. So exactly. each thing that I'm hearing, I can interpret differently. That's what you know when you read a book, you can read it 10 times. Each time you read it, yeah. you'll see it as a totally different thing because exactly. different information will jump out at you. And, and like so, yeah. the master taught us, when you read a book, you only retain like 10% of the information. So 
the first time you read it, you've only got 10%. Mm. So read it seven times, you'll get 70%. Because every time you're getting 10 more percent. Mm. And that's how you have to really reread some of the books over and over again. But people don't naturally go, I'm going to read the book seven times. Yeah, that yeah. fast track mentality where yeah. we think these days everything's so fast, so fast. You think yeah. you literally watch one video, read one book, you reach enlightenment. Mm. It's a journey. Yeah, it's, uh, a it's a journey. A, it's a journey. So, <laughs> so that's why we say <laughs> fast track your spiritual and conscious journey. Like we, we help you because that's what the master did for us. He was like, okay, I've gone into every single walk of life. I've been to every religion. I've been to name it. That's why he's able to answer questions on everything. Yeah. And he was like, I'm going to take you on a long journey on a short path. And then people like, mm. what do you mean by that? So he explained it. He said, I've got one hour, right, symbolically, which was from 1970 to the year 2030, to give you 76 trillion years of information. But I've only got a limited amount of time. So symbolically, from 1970 to the year 2000 was the first half hour. And this is also spoken about in, in like, the prophecies. And then from the year 2000 to the year 2030, it's the second half hour. And then when he started to teach, everybody was just asking questions on religion. And he's like, I've come to give you guys, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like inform galactical information and how this whole shift is happening. And you lot asking me about Abraham and Moses and Jesus. So he was like, I'm going to put away that information. And he spent 30 years teaching us everything we wanted to know about Abraham and Jesus and Muhammad, the Quran, the Bible and all of that. Then at the year 2000, he was like, you know what? We're running out of time. I've spent the first half hour or 30 years on religion. Now I have to give it to you. And he, he said, I have to give you right knowledge, right knowledge, right wisdom, right understanding. There's no more time for all the, like, like the belief stuff now. We're going to get straight to the facts. And in 2002, he was kidnapped. When he started to really go in the into juicy that, stuff. yeah. So <laughs> people are now like, because he's made a statement. I come giving you what you want, so you will learn to want what I have to give, and and he explained that later on that he came to give us right knowledge or wusabat. We wanted religion, and then he said, oh, "I'll give you what you want until you learn." And then people got to a point where they left before he started to give. Like you say, the juicy stuff, and that's actual facts, part of that, master secrets, and now it's like nothing is left unturned. If you can handle it, then the journey is yours. But unfortunately, um, a lot of people say they want the truth until they get mm. the truth. And then it's like, whoa, because now it means you have to change. Yeah. Like, change your diet, you have to study. This is not a dip in water religion and now you will save again. Like now you have to study, you have to learn, you have to start putting into practice mm. what you're being taught. You have to go out there and teach other people. Like you say, help your family and your friends and everyone that wants to know. And there are people that are ready, that are ready for that conscious shift. And some people can't help it because it's your calling anyway. Mm. It's like, it drives you, you know, you can't like, you can pretend, but... It's going to keep coming back and coming back until you do something about mm. it. So, yeah, this is for anyone who wants to, um, yeah, who wants to make it. Or you can keep coming back to this planet and going through the cycles until, <laughs> no until, thanks. You, until you're I'm tired out. of it. <laughs> but, yeah, so, um, yeah, that was, that was really interesting. Yeah. yeah, honestly, so many, millions of questions because there's a million different things you can talk about. But, yeah, I think... For, for this part, it started off quite <laughs> depressing, but it's got to be covered. Yeah, definitely a depressing to. topic. But again, yeah. it's, it's something that we all need to discuss. Um, but yeah, again, raising children, raising mm. ourselves, because you know we're always growing. So yeah, all of these are important topics for us to keep expanding ourselves. I wonder if there's yeah. going to be another part because it seems like every time we meet, um, <laughs> honestly, <there's laughs> let's like, see what the comments. I, I said we time. still haven't discussed the tattoos. That we oh yeah, discuss. let's touch on the tattoos. So, quickly, I wanted then. to talk about like in terms yeah. of uh, women dressing modesty. You know, like recently there's there's been uh, certain countries that mm. want to ban women. You know, completely covered up head to toe. Yeah. And there's other women that just are happy to wear, you know, mm. lingerie out and so on and so on. There's so many topics yeah, yeah. to cover. Let's touch on those quickly. Just quick, quick. Um, <laughs> tattoos, um, again, some will say is a mark of the beast. 
because you're being marked. Um, but you have to always think as well, like the health benefits, right? What people don't realize, a lot of the tattoo is actually metal, it's ink, mm. and it's and your body's porous, so the, the ink seeps into your bloodstream. So it's actually quite dangerous, like in terms of, you know what I mean, that can poison you. Um, so again, you have to think, why do you do it? And why are you putting it on? And people have all kinds of reasons for doing it, but we don't advocate it. But again, we're not like, we're not a religion. We're not like, if you've got tattoos, you're going to heaven and you're mm. back. Like, it's like, if you can, if it's having a, an effect on your health, some people go and try and remove them. Mm. Um, it's just the same as having mercury in your teeth, you know, like the mercury is going to, you know, go mm. into your bloodstream and it causes you all kinds of problems. So that's the tattoo. Um, if you've got them already, you've got them. And at the end of the day, we don't dictate to people like, you know what I mean? Because there are people who had it before they came into mm. also. But um, the dressing thing, the women, women are becoming more liberated. The, the veil and all that, that's a religious thing. Um, and, you know, we can go into that another time. But um, a lot of people are starting to recognise that religion suppresses women, especially like in Islam, where they have to cover up and things like that. And the question is, if God created you beautiful and whatever, why does he want you to hide and cover up? This is men's um, insecurities and men trying to control women. Mm. That's where all that comes from. Women are becoming more liberated. It's their time now. Um, so, but at the same time, you have to do things in moderation, like, you know, dress. Again, in Wusabat, we have a culture, we have dress code, we have, you know what I mean, our attire and things like that because it's about dressing respectfully and um, we don't do the extremes in anything. Like, don't underdress, don't overdress, don't wear your clothes too baggy don't wear your clothes too tight. It's mm. like there's always the moderation or the fine balance in, in what we do. Um, again, yeah, so that's quick, but next time maybe, if there is a next time, it looks yeah. like there will be another <laughs> another part because you've you got so many questions. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, it's one of those things <laughs> when if it's in your calling and every day you wake up and you just can't help but think of the existential questions of life, yeah. I've tried to suppress it. Yeah, yeah. I've tried to be like, you know what? I just want to be normal. I just want to go do my nine to five, come home, sleep, just like all my friends, get my yeah, designer bag and be happy. I tried that. My God, I think I lost about two, three months. I was so <laughs> depressed. I was like, yeah, the I thing need is, to know. Is, I need it, to yeah, know. Why are we knowing, here? Knowing, that's why they said the truth shall make you free. Mm. You know, because... There's nothing more, like, it's liberating, you yeah. know? It's just like, there's chaos in not knowing something. And the master puts it like this simply, like, as you're sitting here right now, you know where your house is, right? Mm. You know the key that fits your door. You know how you're going to get there from here. So you're relaxed. There's no worries. But if I was telling you to go somewhere and you didn't have the address, you didn't have the directions, you don't know where you're going. Or even if I lost my own key. Yeah, you're going to be stressed out. So <laughs> to know it's actually... Mm. It just gives you that kind of like calm self-confidence and everything. But to not know that stress of that, it's like not knowing if you die, what's going to happen to you? Am I going to go to hell? Am I going to mm. burn? Not knowing if it's true they're telling me, not knowing this, it's too much chaos. It's, it's almost too much like another yeah, stress. spiritual warfare sort of weapon where the more confusion you have because you're confused of what's going to happen. Yeah. Like, oh, I wore this today. Am I going to burn because my shoulder's exposed? Exactly. I've got a tattoo. Am I going to burn in hell? And every day you're on the edge because you're doing everything and you don't know. Yeah, but you know. And, and it's because somebody's telling you and you're afraid of what they're saying. This is what Christ, mm. crisis. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it brings. It brings crisis because it's like, yeah, that, just, just panicking and worrying and stress mm. kills. Yeah. So many people are stressed out over things that, to a certain degree, they have no control yeah. over, and it's not even their own doing. You know, it's like, I, you know, I'm not responsible for why there's no jobs in the country, and now you've got two people like, mm. oh, you're taking all our jobs. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, did you create any jobs that you're worried? I'm just, just saying, like, yeah, the yeah. thing that was happening the other day with people just, yeah, I thought we were going to do a video on that actually. Like, it was just crazy, like, to see. The, yeah, I left the country the, when that was happening. Yeah, you actually, were, you so were away. Like, That's why we didn't get to touch on it because I was like, this is this is ridiculous. 
and this is all the things about division, mm. racism, people fighting yeah. against each other, religions, it's all like orchestrated. you're Muslim, I'm going to fight you because you're Christian, you're Christian, I'm going to fight you because you're a Jew. It's like, leave it all, come to Walsabat mm. and you'll be peace. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, I was saying even myself uh, when I came here today, because recently I've been sort of involved in a religion mm. um, that obviously had rules set out as to what I need to wear. Mm. Otherwise, yeah. there is hellfire. So, so <laughs> this one we're yeah, yeah, right yeah. now is very exposed yeah. to what so I'm to, normally to, used to. Where is that? I'm Muslim, right? Yeah, you Muslim. yeah another sister I so spoke to was the same. I even bought a scarf because I was like, just in case, like this, because <laughs> I feel so naked. And I thought, actually, compared to... Most people, this is quite modest, yeah. but it's just that whole mentality. But this is where, you know, it came to a point where it was suppressing me, mm. oppressing me, and it was not for me. Mm. So I left it. But obviously the whole reason why I was there, because at first I found it liberating. I was like, wow, no one can see my, my, my body shape yeah, or my yeah. skin anymore. I so, mean, you know, there's always you a positive. You utilise this at all. So like, I think yeah. Yeah, with everything, you take what you need, yeah. leave what you don't, leave whenever you, you are ready. But obviously other people don't have that freedom because family and, you know, they feel stuck. Yeah. I mean, but, I do get like the... the Islam in terms of, you know, like if you're wearing a hijab or whatever, and I'm talking about people who are really practicing it properly, mm. where if a, a man's not going to lust after you because they're looking at your body and if they're talking to you, they're you know, just looking at your eyes and it's more like engaging, you're having a conversation. So it had its mm. uses and yeah, it's good to be the discipline aspect of Islam and the modesty is good, but where they take it too far now, where it's like suppression. So like, you said, Rusa yeah. in the middle. Yeah, none it's, of like, it's like extremes. women walk behind, you you can't do this, you can't do We We don't do that. In fact, we want the women in front to lead because they actually the sacred feminine, as we say. They are the ones with the XX chromosome. They gave birth to us. But when we say that... Um, we don't mean that the women should be up front and then suppress the men. Mm. Like they've been suppressed. It's like we work together, mm. left brain, right brain. And yeah, that we're also about, it's about balance and harmony. And our females, are you, like we say, don't, don't believe us. Check it out. Like you see how our female dress, they dress modestly. Um, not everyone, because obviously people are at different levels. Yeah. Some people, you see them, they still dress like most of the people you see on the street because mm. they just come in into it. And um, it takes time to like adjust, but what's about it's about what makes sense and is sensible and it's factual and it's um, yeah, just balance, yeah, mm. yeah, balance, balance. I like that. I think we can end on that. Yeah, yeah. balance, keep, harmony, keep peace. Your balance. Yeah. Keep your eyes open. Question everything. Decide for yourself. Yep. And um, yeah, so when's um, when's that then? How often do you have your new new people sessions? You said newcomer uh, sessions. Uh, we we have once a month every week. Every week. Yeah, okay. e every Saturday people can come to class. Um, we have events that take place as well. We had a nice uh, open mic event. Oh, over I heard. There. You know what? That was yeah. another question we had. Yeah. I heard you had a karaoke night. Yeah, that's it. What kind of music is it? Uh, Honestly, the questions will never stop. Yeah, I mean, we. we, <laughs> what, kind we of, I was like, what kind of music would you. Uh, we, if with music, everything is like with us is like, okay, obviously, different artists came and performed. All we said to the artist is like, keep it clean, no profanity, no vulgarity, you know what I mean? Just like, because there's family and children. Um, so, yeah, it's all hip hop, soul, any, oh, anything. Shit. Like, yeah, but um, someone was playing guitar, acoustic singing, someone else was playing the piano and singing. Um, yeah, it was, we had poetry, we had different, you know, different things. So mm. we, we, we're just like, avoid the extremes. Honestly, um, you guys are really drawing me in right now. I think I'm, <laughs> I don't think I've got any plans on Saturday. <laughs> but um, again, another thing I should say, um, different people have different personalities and characters. Mm. In it. So you, you might get on with me and we're like this and you might speak to somebody else and might not get the exact same kind of vibes, but on the but that's whole... that's life as well. That's life, yeah. that's what I'm saying. So mm. I would say, like, like when we're... Yeah, we're normal. We're very normal people. Like, <laughs> that sounds suspicious <laughs> now. No, I'm just saying, like, because some people think... <laughs> but, uh, because we know so much or have so much information... Yeah, yeah. and Because, like, people come in the shop sometimes and I'm not wearing my full attire. Like, I might just be casual. And they're just like, oh... Like you, you, yeah, you're, you're normal. You're, you're normal. I'm like, yeah, of course I'm normal, you know, so... 
No, yeah. I know what you mean because I've yeah. been to a lot of spiritual festivals and a lot of these spiritual gurus and there's a lot of these spiritual people that come together and develop cult sort of thing. It's they lose the groundedness mm. and there's no balance again yeah. because you guys have the balance they don't yeah. and it they do a lot of things that are literally you know you think oh this is not normal not yeah. to judge them as well because it's their own thing yeah, but yeah, yeah. I know what you mean like most people would I wouldn't bring my friends there because I know. 99% wouldn't be open-minded enough. Whereas, mm. you know, everything that you guys have talked about, it's out there. Mm. But I know a lot of people can be like, oh, I can, I can work with that. You I know what I think mean? With, with us, um, one of the things is, like I said, is, is when you have to start doing the work mm. of fixing yourself um, in terms of, like, for example, your diet. And, and the thing, we don't, it's not even like, no, like, no one will impose anything on you. But, like, I'm just saying the work you have to do, like... Like you said, maybe starting to dress a bit modestly or, you know, just the things that if you're going to apply Wusabat, um, you know, that's where I think sometimes the truth can be a bit much for some people. Like mm. when, when you start hearing, you know, like certain things. Um, I'm trying not to make it sound all like spooky, but like, for example, <laughs> like when it comes to food, um, we, you know, we would say, have a vegan diet but it's not like you have to and there are people that still eat meat and still eat like chicken or whatever but that's down to the individual you know what i mean but if you wanted to do what's the best thing for you then that's what we would mm. say i'm just trying to give a few like little examples um but I, I would i would even try to do that i think people should just try and um experience it for mm. themselves and just um people come and go yeah like, you know there's no like, you must. Not like you're so you're so yeah. and you're tied here no, forever. No. Like it's, it's up to you. Um, <laughs> that's the thing. We don't. We don't. We're not looking for followers. Mm. We're not like you know go out there and like like people try to recruit people. And they're literally, we also about it's like this is what it is. If you like it and it, it sits well with you and you want to accept it, it's down to you. If you mm. want to leave, leave. If you want to stay, like stay, so if I was to come hang out for a month or two. Mm, not resonate too much come back a year later mm. you guys will be like yeah welcome yeah but then you will also if if you're like come and go come and go it's like uh, you know, obviously that shows that like very, yeah, yeah you're not really i know you're not like disciplined very, yeah and, you're and not really serious confusion. about it but people do that as well but if yeah if yeah. i was to come yeah there's no obligation to stay no not at all. leave and then think about it yeah, yeah, come yeah. Back i mean and, when you say come the coming is just coming to class mm. sitting down asking questions yeah. Listen to have conversations with other people, socialize, maybe read. Some yeah, but not for me books. to speak to some of the sisters involved yeah, yeah, as well. Because I've only people. spoken to you yeah, that's exactly, advocating. So. Exactly. So yeah. you get to feel and then like when we have events, you come to the events. Yeah. Um when you read the books, the books actually tell you how to live and how to behave and what mm. to do anyway. So it's like yeah, no one can say you're not a, a Sabian or you're you know what I mean, you're not that's not for people mm. to say to other people because it's like who are you to judge yeah. other person but the books will tell you so for, for example if the book says we do this or we don't do this now if you see someone doing it it's either they don't know um, and you can then bring their attention to it or if they know and they choose to still do something else then you just leave them like okay that's, Give them that's the benefit you. of the yeah, doubt or that's whatever. On you, yeah, you know? um, yeah. Wusaba is beautiful. It's like I said. I'm a very, I was a very, I'm still am skeptical person in terms of, like, um, if I could, if I met someone else or something else that, um, I mean, I've been following, I've been in Wusaba for over thirty years now, and like, yeah. yeah so it's like. If there was ever anything or anyone else out there that could come and challenge, or not even like we're here to debate, like, but it's like, show me something that I'm missing in Wusabat mm. or that Wusabat hasn't been able to address, then I'll be like, okay, let me let me listen to you. I will listen to people anyway, but most of the time, um, no, nothing comes close, mm. not even remotely close, because Wusabat comes from a point of view that. Unless you're saying, ask us anything, everyone's welcome, the truth is the truth, can you deal with that, um, love and unity, you know, like, 
saving humanity, cleaning up the planet. Um, if you're ready to work, like doing those things, come on board. Um, people are not willing to take on the responsibility. They rather point the fingers at everyone else and say, you know, Islam will say it's Christianity's fault. Christianity will say it's Islam's fault. The Jews will say, it's, and then they'll fight, bomb each other, kill each other, and nobody mm. comes up with a solution. It's like, what's the answer then? If you're saying I'm wrong and I'm saying you're wrong, okay, what's the answer? <laughs> Where we're saying you're all wrong, come together, <laughs> let's let's work together and mm. just fix the problems together. And um, if you're ready to do that, we'll sabbat it for you. And then you have people who are actually maybe suffering from, you know, things, mental health, mental health as we've broken down before, um, the fear, all these things that people have, and we have a solution for that. And that's really you transforming from the lifestyle or the things you're doing to, a, you know, a new lifestyle that will get rid of those things. So, for example, some people might not want to let go of bad habits that they may have like on you know drugs or things like that you know so it's up to them whether or not they want to make the change or not but mm. yeah something to think about yeah mm. but yeah i think right. that's uh enough questions for today we'll have to do a part three and four and five <laughs> <laughs> let's see you what know I'll, I'll come to some sessions yeah. and then i'll come back with all my new yeah questions. that's a great idea yeah. That's what we'll do. So we've had a, a month since the last, well, kind of a month since uh, the yeah. last one. Another month. I'll yeah, some yeah, sessions that's a good, for, a good some idea. questions. And yeah, yeah we'll take cool. it from there. All right.